Hey, what's up? <clears throat> this is day eight of recording myself vlog style. I'm working on my public speaking skills. It's getting easier, I think, to process my thoughts as, at the same time as speaking. So we're making progress, that's good. Been able to cut out some ums just from what I'm noticing. I recorded a self tape today with my brother. Actually, let me start from the beginning of the day. So the day started when I woke up at nine, got out of bed like 9.15, uh, got ready, left the house around 9.30. Uh, went, made my way over to Katie Kalaki's. Uh, she wasn't there today. Uh, there was a instructor. Her name was Vicky. She was a retired police officer, 28 years of service. And she was the one conducting class today. And she had, basically the class was about prop gun safety or like how to look good with a gun on camera. And so the first thing she went over was gun safety. Always keep uh, the muzzle pointed down. Uh, always check the magazine. Always check the barrel to see if there's any bullets in there and in that order, right? So you wanna take the magazine out and then check the barrel. Because if you take, check the barrel first and then take out the magazine, there could still be uh, a bullet moving up into the barrel. So you do a double check if that happens and always listen to the armorer, have the armorer check, and then you can do a double check. Everything is within reason, unless it is a fully plastic or fully rubber gun. If it has like a mechanism to, to that operates in the same way as a gun, or if it fires BBs, or if it fires anything, or if you know there's any room for error, then that's when you have to take gun safety into your own hands and make sure that the gun is safe. We also worked on, I guess, scenes uh, with a gun. And it's crazy how much the gun changes the dynamic of the scene and how much more you have to prepare in order to conduct a scene with a gun. And so what Vicky was saying was that it's a lot about communication being a police officer, she has very strong communication skills. Uh, she presented us with different scenarios in which we were, uh, I guess, police officers. And it was almost like improv, but <clears throat> I think she made a great point of like problem solving skills, like coming prepared and then being able to contribute something to a set where they may not have like a fully fleshed out idea of what what's gonna happen. But if you come with a, a certain presence, with preparation, and knowing how to handle a gun and how to conduct yourself on camera uh, with a crew, uh, taking director's notes and bringing something to the table, how that can create something special and how that can ultimately create a better picture. So we did a lot of that and not gonna lie, uh, I had some difficulty or I was a bit out of my comfort zone. Just, even though it's a plastic prop gun, it still heightens the, the, the feeling of adrenaline. So uh, Vicky was saying that people don't even realize that they're pulling the trigger sometimes because there's so much uh, nervous energy in the air because it's such an unfamiliar thing. So that was the beginning of my day. After that, I ended up going to Fudgy. I got a bun me, a, a beef bun me. The bread was so crisp. And I had, ended up talking to the young cat, uh, the owner's son, Jason Tran. And he was telling me about his filmmaking friend uh, at Ithaca College, who's always coming up with ideas to, to shoot short films. And you know, write scripts. And I was a bit inspired by that. We exchanged Instagrams. <clears throat> I also got a side soup and I also got 
spring rolls, and I also got a Vietnamese coffee, which was way too sweet. He put way too much condensed milk in it, but you know, it is what it is. We ended up going to Gaithers, I ended up going to Gaithersburg Col uh, Library, I don't know why I said college, library afterwards, and just uh, read my Filmmaking for Dummies book, took some notes about genres, the different genres. The, one of the studio executives of WB uh, Studios, Warner Brothers, was talking about how you don't want a feathered fish, which is, it's like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit, but it doesn't have like a distinct genre. And so it feels, I guess, uh, not cohesive but i mean there are also you know genre blending genres right there's dramedies and and historic comedies and all sorts of types of things but they know what they are and their tone i think is uh, cohesive whereas some of these amateur projects might try to do everything and then not accomplish anything and I think that's the point that I was trying to get across. Uh, after Gaithersburg Library, I ended up coming home and recruited my brother to help me with this self-tape for Isaac's project, which is, I, I believe he's uh, directing his own uh, short film. And I had the option of going for either this character, Brayden, who's very entitled, and knows it and uh, flaunts it and kind of pushes it in the main character Tariq's face or this character Mark who is somebody that Tariq uh, went to high school with and th their superlatives were Brayden was most likely to become president and Mark was most likely uh, to end up getting arrested for the same crime three times. So yeah, they were calling him uh, pull the fire alarm Mark or something like that. Pull the fire alarm Mark Holton. I, don't, I forget what the nickname was, but rehearsed it with my brother. Actually before that, I tried to do some script analysis, ended up going on weaudition.com, ended up working with this guy, Michael, who does a lot of theater. We were able to do some script analysis together on the piece, uh, he just having him there and having like a different perspective on it uh, allowed me to, I think, explore in more depth the character and understand the story better. And when it came to rehearsing and uh, recording the self tape with my brother, I think I was able to create a, a more cohesive and story driven self tape. And hopefully Isaac likes it. If not, uh, it, it was great practice and I think it's all about craft. I'm not too worried. I mean, of course we want to do the best we can and hit every moment and bring something creative and, you know, give an Oscar worthy performance, but it's step by step, right? And so even if it's not a perfect self tape, I think it's a step in the right direction, working collaboratively with my brother, with Michael, doing my own research, bringing something fresh I think uh, was very good for my practice and was very productive. After the self tape, I sent the Wii transfer over to Isaac. Hopefully he watches it. He might have something else in mind. It really doesn't matter. It's more about doing it than actually getting a role. I mean, eventually we want to be booking, you know, left and right, uh, getting everything we want to do. But ultimately, I think it's about the practice, it's about the process, it's about, uh, yeah, it's about the process and the, and the journey. So in terms of that, we accomplished that. After that, I went to, um, oh, before that, after the library, I actually went to Chipotle, picked up Chipotle, me and my brother ate Chipotle. But after, after recording this self tape, I ended up going to the gym and played basketball for a good while with Jerry, who is, I think, a D2 player and has probably the most complete game I've seen at lifetime. He can score at will. He has great defense. He has great uh, understanding of the game. 
uh, and is athletically a tier above pretty much everybody at, in the gym. So he's definitely somebody I look up to uh, in terms of basketball. And I hear he's also a consultant at Deloitte, so he, he's probably making bread too. So yeah, just playing with him, being on his team, I was able to do my thing, you know, shoot open threes, uh, rebound, play hard defense, and then he was able to clean up the game for us. And then, yeah, we, we, we played a lot of two on two. We, we cooked because Jerry is really a, ahead above everybody else. Uh, but then we came down to playing one on one and, and this man just straight cooked me. Uh, I probably have really good defense compared to a lot of people, but this man, Jerry is hard to guard for sure because he's strong even if i get to the spot he's able to like just like like double clutch stuff in the air he has a a shot with a high release like a, a back like that's hard to hard to get to really you kind of have to uh hope he misses a lot and capitalize off those moments and i think what what was happening was say he misses okay now it's my turn to attack with the ball and he just i wasn't able to capitalize on those moments i guess because i'm so focused on defense i've been working so hard on defense finally i get the ball and i think i'm my pace is being rushed and so i'm like ooh, like i want to put the ball up i put the ball up ding it's his ball again and now we start all over again and so i think Patience, taking my time with the ball, looking for the opportune moment is critical, I think, uh, in this next step of, uh, of skill development within basketball. After that, I ran a mile on the treadmill. Uh, ran at seven miles per hour, did the last point one at 12 miles per hour, sprinted out the last uh, part of it. Then I did weighted uh, sit-ups with a 25 pound weight. Uh, with doing Russian twists at the top, holding it, uh, flexing my bottom abs. And then I tried to do lat pull down, couldn't do that, so struggling. And then after that, I was trying to figure out whether I should hit the hot tub or just come home. And then I ended up coming home and I realized there's all this work still to be done in terms of laundry's gotta get done, trash has gotta get taken out. I still have to shower, I still have to eat. I still haven't eaten yet, actually. And it's, what, 12, 10? So it's been a long, but very fruitful and productive day. I'm, and just, and I didn't realize that until I started talking about it. And I'm very proud of myself for what I've accomplished today. I, I understand that rest is ne rest and recovery is necessary. So tomorrow, I think it's gonna be more of a, recovery day um, more recovery oriented we're still gonna work out a little bit um, but we're gonna eat right we're gonna we're gonna get a lot of water in we're gonna sleep right we're gonna get our protein in um, we're just gonna I think lock down on more book reading more rehearsing of the script I have for Friday Saturday I didn't even mention that but that's something that needs to get done as well my brother said he would be able to help me with that and yeah, we've, we've come a long way in just a day even. So yeah, proud of myself. Know there's a lot more work to be done. Uh, understand that this pace isn't sustainable, but I mean, this is how we have to grind. This is, this, this is what it's all about. And I know burnout's a real thing, uh, but so is passion. Uh, I'm really trying to figure out balance. Really, I hit my my weight like that uh, that I had been going for a lot faster than I thought I would. Maybe from not eating as much to just today. I still need to eat, right? But I weighed myself and I'm 177, 178, and two weeks ago I was 186. So uh, I'm a little bit scared of how fast I've lost weight. But then yesterday I was playing great basketball, you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm fast now, so maybe it's just from running, but I don't know if this is healthy or not. 
So I'm still trying to figure out my process. We're still tweaking. The, it's all about the process, right? So we're still tweaking the process. We're still trying to figure things out. Uh, but it's good to sit down, reflect and review uh, how far we've come, what we've accomplished today and what we need to do tomorrow. Looking forward, living in the present, being mindful, all that, yeah. I think I'm reaching my limit. So I think that's all I got. <sighs> Stay tuned for what we do tomorrow.